Hey, Tech here. So welcome to the VRTech channel. So it's not the first time that we talk about the XR2, the next generation processor for our VR headsets. It's created directly from Qualcomm. And as we saw in the past, will bring many, many new features to our platform, to our headset with much higher resolution, better AI, better graphical computing power. And by the way, I made a video over here explaining pretty much everything about this new platform and what we can expect. But today's video is different because we're not talking anymore about just marketing from Qualcomm, but actually a real benchmark that popped up on Geekbench. Let's get into it. All right, here we are. So this was first spotted by Tech Genites. I am pretty sure I murdered the name. Uh, by the way, that found a variant of the HTC Vive Focus running the XR2, of course, on Geekbench. What is the HTC Vive Focus, by the way? Well, I tried it very briefly in the past, but that is the standalone headset directly from HTC. Kind of a competitor for the grass, but not really, because that's more focused toward business and the Asian market. Instead, here here in the US market, European market, we have mostly just the Oculus Quest. It's worth noticing that the HTC Vive Cosmos was the first standalone headset on the market with 60 OF, and that was like a really big breakthrough. But then uh, the Oculus Quest arrived and well, everything changed. And it's kind of no wonder that again, they lead kind of this ecosystem to the next step using this new processor finally for the market. Now, we don't have any confirmations yet, by the way, from ACC, if this is gonna be available in the near future or a little later, we don't have any information about the price and we don't have any information, of course, if this is gonna be consumer ready headset that I highly doubt because ACC said already that they're not competing anymore with Oculus for the consumer market. Uh, so it's gonna be probably just a business headset. That means higher cost and stuff like that. But yeah, take it as it is. But if it's arriving to an headset, well, it might arrive to different headsets in the near future as well. So uh, I think it's a good news over there. But uh, let's get to the chipset, of course, because let's talk a little more about what this thing is capable of. Again, uh, you can check out the video that is gonna be up here anyway with all the different things, but very, very briefly, a Qualcomm Snapdragon Dragon XR2 will be capable of seven concurrent cameras for the tracking through mixed reality, XR and AI all together to maybe have a better understanding of the situation also to super sample maybe some images. 5G in case if it's integrated, of course, in the chipset to have a better connection and be able also to stream better the content and not just having directly in your standalone headset. AK supports capability for video playback, voice UI and context awareness, and at the same time the possibility to have two 3K display running at 90 years at the same time. So very, very interesting indeed. But now let's get to the benchmarks, of course, because one of the most interesting things for me uh, to see was actually to see the comparison with the Oculus Quest that runs a Snapdragon 835 when the XR2 is based on the Snapdragon 865. So there's a big generational leap over there. And from the numbers, we can see that, well, these new processor kind of crashes completely what is the Oculus Quest right now. With the single core score of 924 compared to the Oculus Quest 256 and a multi-core score of 3416 compared to 774 on the Oculus Quest. It's worth noticing though that benchmarks don't really translate that well in, in real life. So if a game is better optimized and stuff like that will always run better even in a smaller processor. But if raw power is interesting for you, well, this is really brutal uh, compared with what we have in the current platform like the Snapdragon 8. 25, 35. The benchmark is also divided in different tasks. I'm not gonna go through all of them because it uh, doesn't really make sense for us, but you can see very clearly that the XR2 is much, much better, like three times better in pretty much everything that we see. Also in HDR capabilities, like uh, uh, more than eight times better and ray tracing, uh, kind of the same thing. So it's very, very nice to see. Are we gonna see in the ray tracing in the next standalone headset? 
I don't think so, uh, but the capabilities, they're starting to be there. And that's an interesting thing, of course. Now, I'm gonna leave every link in the description below. So if you wanna see the comparison by yourself, you can do so. But uh, just a reminder, well, we have a GPU, CPU power that is two times better than the one that we have on the Oculus Quest. We have a video pixel throughput that is four times better. Native resolutions per eyes that can be six times better. And AI performance up to 11 times better. That is kind of impressive. But here we have, guys, I wanted to share with you this thing because I think that it's really interesting that we're starting to see in the wild uh, this new processor with this new uh, like big powerhouse that could power the future standalone headset. Are we gonna see it soon? Probably on the next Vive Focus? Well, probably yes. Are we gonna see it on the next standalone headset from Oculus? Well, we don't know yet, but the pressure might be very, very high in this moment. They could still play just a software game, but you know, competition is going, competition is growing, and uh, that's what we want from the market, of course. But uh, yeah, are you expecting it in the next headset? Let me know in the comment below. And as always, guys, if you liked the video, like. If you did like the video, like, subscribe to the channel for more about VR tech. And if you really love the channel, there's a join button down there that really helps to grow over here. Very interesting stuff coming very, very soon. I also have a super big box in front of me in this moment, so I can wait to unbox it and stuff like that. And if you want to support the channel in a different way, we also have the t-shirts like this one, the sticker, the mask, and it's a 2020 item for excellence. And uh, yeah, it's gonna be everything in the description below. Uh, but thanks so much for watching. Anyway, guys, as always, and again, like, dislike, subscribe. See you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.